Another Miata video. I know you guys are so excited. Actually, I'm excited because this is the final round of work to this. This car has been a thorn in my side. I bought this car from a local guy. It was wrecked, totaled, totaled. Uh, I, I threw a subframe in it. I actually made a short on that. Got a lot of Miatas up here in Port Apart, but not all of them get parted out. This one came in, hit in the wheel, fender damage. The hood's good, thankfully. Needs a front bumper and headlight. And I just pulled the front subframe out of it. I want to show you the damage. You can see the upper control arm took the brunt of the damage, but the reason why I pulled the subframe is because of this bolt here. This top bolt bends in a U, which makes it a ton of work to get out, but it also bends this part of the actual subframe. So while the lower part of the subframe is good, the upper is bad, and I might fight this or it may not align correctly, it may have too much negative camber. So I decided we have the parts here. We're just gonna put another subframe in it. Well, we're all back together here. Runs and drives okay, considering it's got a donut on the back and three other mismatched tires, but just need a fender, headlight, and a front bumper, and to fix the issues that were existing before this car was wrecked. And then I realized quickly that the people that worked on this car should have their tools repossessed. There has been no work done to this car that was done in any, any type of professional manner at all. I have spent hours and hours making it right. Thankfully, I have a yard full of Miatas, so I have all the connectors that were broken, all the clips that were missing, all the hardware missing or destroyed. To make this car as good as it was before people actually worked on it. So I'm, uh, here's a little highlight reel of some of the things I found as I took this car apart and tried to fix it. I didn't plan on making a video on this car at all. This is a 2001 Miata I bought strictly to fix and sell. I like saving these cars, like putting nice examples back on the road. I part out enough of them that I have pretty much anything it could need. And yet I'm making a video because I want to show you guys the hack work that a shop has done to this car in the past. Now, the guy I bought the car from didn't work on this car at all. And the shops that he took it to didn't do any of this work because he didn't own it very long before it was wrecked. But whoever did this work, there's a shop down in Florida. I have all the receipts for it. I am absolutely not going to name names, but if you know this car, if you recognize this car, if you touch this car, you should be absolutely ashamed of yourself. So this car, I got a fender painted for it. I had to hang a complete subframe on it. That's all done. I, I drove it home actually. I, it had a fender on it when I drove it home. And at first glance, this 94,000 mile six speed car isn't really that bad. It looks kind of nice. It's pretty straight, but uh, if you just look for half a second, it's, it's bad. There are so many broken connectors on this harness. And I know what you're gonna say. Well, they're fragile and it's 20 years old. That's older, no broken connectors. That's older, no broken connectors. Also, this is a first generation Miata fan in a second gen car. And since it had the wrong connector on it, this, this was their workaround. This is just, no, don't do that. And then because all of the factory harness retaining clips are gone, there's zip ties, stuff doesn't fit right. Oh, another broken connector. I, the more you look, the worse it gets. There's a non-original hose clamp. Why would you ever need to replace this? I have no idea. Also, there's supposed to be a stay bracket, a support bracket for the intake manifold. It's been deleted. The more you look, the worse it gets. And my personal favorite, absolutely amazing. Those little clips that keep the brake line in place. They just didn't need them anymore. Why, why would you not put that back in? Well, mystery solved. The reason why those clips don't fit in here is because these won't fit in the chassis because this is on the right side of the vehicle and this is the left front brake hose. They're not the same. Nope, there is a left and a right. And instead of making it right or realizing the error, they just, it's, it's fine got to do better than this. So I've got the new line installed and amazing when it's the right side that the clip fits in there. Thank God I have extra Miatas and parts. This car also has an aftermarket AC compressor. It is the third time a compressor has been on this car if I read all the receipts right. And guess what? The AC still does not work. Huh. 
it's almost like that wasn't the original problem. Now they do go bad, but they usually not three times in 94,000 miles. Check out that AC line and how the power steering line is routed. Mm-hmm, yep. So I got this cobbled together AC line out, kinked, kinked, welded, welded. And I thought, why would they do all this? That's, that doesn't make any sense. And then when I tried to put the new line in, the bolt was swapped. And as you can see, I already removed this because this was flipped. So it was like this and it's supposed to, or was like this and it's supposed to be like this. How hard was that to figure out? Amateur. Yes, we just, we're just gonna peel, peel the harnesses away and just leave the boot disconnected. That's, that's fine. And then this is wild. This is a sway bar bracket and what is going on here? Now, I don't really know why this is like this at all. I don't think this thing has had a front end put on it because I don't see any other signs of that, but I don't know why it's been sanded and painted and then the bolts are just gone. Now on the other side, they're not broken off. They're just not there. So I guess they just wanted to make it symmetrical. Now I can only guess why the trunk is black, but there's no signs that this thing has been wrecked. So someone went in here and did, maybe did some rust proofing. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that towel is not OEM. And then this is just, there's supposed to be a bolt there. It's a good thing I have all these things. So I've got this all fixed. I just had to drill those out, tap them. And it turns out that none of this has been repainted. There's just some, uh, it's some like oily substance, probably from something leaking for a long time and getting flung everywhere. And then the inner fender rubbed right there you can see where it rubbed because the fastener was missing and it just rubbed the paint through so and i have repaired the wire harness installed a factory fan i uh installed the correct can't see it very well but the correct hose the uh, ac line so that is all fixed everything's good i still have more work to do the clamp has been fixed replace some of these bad connectors here I have one more broken connector right there. That one's really not a great time to uh, to repin. So I've been postponing that one. But for the most part, everything has come together really well. I got a fender on it. Doesn't really look wrecked because it's fixed right. Really had no unibody damage. So I, I think I sell like one Miata power steering pump a year, if I'm lucky. I have tons of them and this car had a power steering leak, and I think I figured it out. That's bad. I don't know that this was caused by anybody not doing something correctly. I think it maybe was just luck of the draw. Final repair, when I say final, is it really ever done? But the next repair that needs to be done is some transmission work. Now, I, I'm no stranger to working on manual transmissions. Automatics are filled with some alien technology. I don't know how any of that works, but, a manual transmission of a Miata is pretty simple, and this one makes a peculiar noise. Battery is unhappy. All right, so that's the noise. When you hit the clutch, putting force on the uh, on the uh, throttle bearing. See the transmission stops spinning. Transmission spinning, noise. Which I suspect is an input shaft bearing. It's a pretty common failure on transmissions that have leaks and have been run low on fluid or have the improper fluid in them. And it is not that difficult of a job to do. The parts are relatively inexpensive. I think I'm in this job total with the rear main seal, pilot bearing, throw out bearing, any of the parts, the while you're in there parts, I'll be in this a few hundred bucks. And a six speed transmission like what this car has is worth 12 to 15, $1,800 depending on miles. This car only has 93,000 miles on it, which is pretty low for a 2001 Miata, but Whoever's worked on this, I'm just going to stop talking. You'll see, 
as we go to get this transmission out. So I think what we're going to do is pull the transmission out. It shouldn't be too hard. And then we'll service the transmission on the bench, stab the transmission back in, start it up, and hopefully no weird noises. Well, it's time to actually do some work instead of talking about the work I've already done. So we're going to get the transmission out of it. I have to remove, this is called a butterfly brace. I have to remove this, this brace. I think I'm going to have to remove this exhaust pipe. And we can just start zipping bolts out. Parts are not going to fall off this one. Now, generally speaking, when I work on a car like this, I make it a habit of threading the bolts back into where they go. Now, these cars, I know exactly where everything goes because I've worked on so many, but it's just a, a good practice to just keep up with. Now it's time to drain the fluid. That wasn't good. I think Ray says something about flashlight gravity. It's different here in Missouri. Uh, have been run low on fluid and run low on fluid been run low on fluid been run low on fluid uh, that's not <laughs> not enough fluid in this one it did shift fine that's not a good sign tell some barbarians been in here because this is broken that is broken. This is not even held on in any kind of way because they just ripped them out with a flathead screwdriver. I see this on most of the Miatas I work on. I just feel like nobody wants to take the time to get to the back side of those clips and get them out the correct way. But it is what it is. We're here. We're going to get this apart. We're going to fix everything the best we can. Okay, that's loose. This is this is stuff is wrong. So I had about a cord in that transmission. That's not not enough. Now, I could fill it back up and see how it sounds, but we're going to take it apart because we've got a rear main leak anyway. We're just going to look at everything and replace everything that needs to be replaced because it needs to be right. Speaking of Barbarian, I was poking around and saw that that top bell housing bolt is the incorrect bolt. It's way too long. It's probably all the way tight, but it's not up against the bell housing, as well as the exhaust manifold has a nut missing. This is all stuff that's easily sorted. Time to remove some more braces. And if you're wondering if this brace is bent, it is. We'll have to fix that too. Oh, that's cool. Let's see what happened here. Oh, it has a uh, captured nut that's broken off. That one's good. That one's good. Okay, we'll just have to work around it. There's no way this works, but I'm gonna try it. I don't think it's doing anything. This is a pretty common problem on this generation of Miata, first and second gens. I guess I might have to get the welder out. Okay. We are going to attempt to weld this so that we can get this bolt out. I say attempt because there is never a guarantee. Now this could work or it, co or it won't. I don't know. We've got two shots at this. No, I just broke the welds. Okay. Let's, let's just lay it on there. Let's get some, give it some more juice. I'm just going to hit with the impact. What's the worst that could happen? Nope, it, it broke those welds again. Wait. Ha-ha! Oh. 
Maybe it didn't. Oh, they cross-threaded it, that's why. Amateurs. Now it's time for the drive shaft. It is right here. It's a pretty easy drive shaft to get out. So these are uh, they have little shanks that get stuck in the input flange. You just got to give them a little tap to get them out. So just a little boop. Drive shaft loose. Didn't really need much there. So I got to get it out of the input shaft. So I do think I have to drop the exhaust, which is not a huge ordeal. It's an ordeal. All right, we're going to get the manifold bolts out so we can drop this in one piece. And I'm going to use this induction heater that was a gift from someone that watches the channel. I just want you to know I appreciate you and you're going to make this job a lot easier. Now these are really notorious for rounding off, stripping, breaking, so I'm going to pull out all of the stops and the goes to get this out intact. Okay, here goes hopefully not a stud. Now if I have to put an exhaust manifold on it or a stud in it, it's not the end of the world. It's just, uh, you know, less work is better, always. that's good the whole stud came out I'm not touching it I know better all right now we're gonna get the last nut hot that sounds weird it's not what I mean okay here goes everything this is either gonna be bad or good I think we're good. I think my socket is stuck. What have I done? Yes, the, the bolt, the nut is off of the stud and the threads are intact. My socket is stuck. Okay. Come out, please. That's good. I already disconnected the harness wire off camera for both oxygen sensors, so we're good there. Now we just need to get the exhaust off the car. Pretty sure the person that did all the mechanical work also painted it. That's all over spray. And you get all these hangers out. So this is fine. Everything is fine. It's fine, guys. Everything's under control. This is not the way you're supposed to do it, but everything's under control. I may have made an error with the O2 sensor wiring. It's fine. I am gonna replace this O2 sensor anyway because whoever installed this did a very bad job and kind of messed it up. So uh, rather than repin, an aftermarket crappy oxygen sensor. I'll just buy a new one or wrench one off one of the cars at work. Look how much more room there is in here. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to kick you. So, I don't have too much left. It may seem like I have a lot left, but I promise you, the exhaust is the hardest part of the entire thing. All right, so the drive shaft is unbolted. We can, there we go. Next, we'll get the slave cylinder out of the way. Oh, so I gotta crack those loose first. Crack these loose first. Okay. 
Those usually come out with your fingers and that you don't need a wrench, but for whatever reason, I mean, pretty much everywhere in this vehicle someone has been, at least in this area, which is probably why there's so many problems that I need to fix. I have 150,000 mile cars. Car, I have 180, 200,000 mile cars come in nicer than this. Oh, we gotta work with it. At this point, we're already. I'm already committed. There's no going back. I'm not. I'm not unfixing it. That's disconnected. Hey, the, those bolts are destroyed. I'll go get some better ones from work. I'll just tuck that up here, out of the way. It's time to get the starter bolts out. And I've got just the tool for that. It's just a little extension, just a little. I actually found this extension in a, a junkyard that isn't open anymore. It was holding up a Honda Civic. <laughs> okay, that bolts out, let's go to the next. Might be a little excessive. It gets the job done. All right, we've got the rest of one and then another starter bolt. This has three starter bolts. They're 12 millimeters. Now this one, is this the one that has a numb on the backside? It sure is. That's not a problem. There's one through bolt on the starter and you can reach through the hole on the other side and usually get to it. Okay, all the starter bolts are now out. Time for bell housing bolts. I usually start at the top and I'll work my way around, but we're just gonna go with what I can grab first. That was that wrong bolt in there. They messed the threads up. Yep, we got bolts to fix this. Yep, that's not right. That is not the right bolt. I'll leave this lower right one for last. See if we have a bolt there. No, that's the one that's missing. So we really only have. Is that one in there? Yeah, we have one, one way up there. We're gonna use the long extension for that one. All right, now I know it's hard to get you guys in there to see this because we're working on stuff that's really tight. And it's way too tight for my camera to get in there. And me, there's only room for, for one of us, okay? So do you, just bear with me. Probably reach around this side and get it. Yep. So now I've got a transmission jack under it. Normally I don't use transmission jacks with these. They're only about 90, 95 pounds on the trans and you can usually manhandle them out of there, but my wife might watch this video. So the transmission jack is in place. Ah. Get these loose. These are through bolts. What is going on up here? That's not right. There's some hokey pokey going on up there. It's not good kind either. Somebody's been in here. So there's some inserts that are supposed to be at the top here, but it seems like whoever put this car together last deleted them in favor of regular hardware, which is harder to use. I I'm confused by their tactics, other unless it was a move out of pure ignorance, possible. So we'll see if we can get them out and then see if we can make this right before it goes back together. Yeah. I mean, it did work. I'll give them credit. It did work. It's just not how it's supposed to be. That's the stuff that bothers me and the very reason why I would be a terrible car salesman. I'm bad at flipping cars because everything's got to be right. I spend way too much time on it. Okay, that's out. And we've got one right here. Now we just have one bell housing bolt and the trans is out. Let's get this thing set up here. Oh, 
Okay, I don't see anything holding this up. See any cause for concern. So typically what I'll do is shift it forward so that this can, will you, PPF, will you get, go away. I don't want you right now. But I'll shift the transmission into like first or third gear, pushes the shifter, shift lever forward so it fits out of the hole. Okay, well that's all the way down. So now I gotta get blue here. Sometimes you can unbolt the shifters and leave it hanging in the car, but I would prefer not to do that. Just like that. Oh yeah, she's leaking. The rear main is for sure leaking. Let's have a good look at the clutch and flywheel too, see if we want to replace it or not. They're not very expensive, and I have some pretty nice ones that I've pulled out of cars over the years. Now let's pull the clutch off. Oh yeah, we're gonna replace this. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And this one's already been replaced once. At least once. I think I saw that in that stack of receipts. Let's see how that pilot bearing feels. Gritty. All right, let's get this flywheel off. Oh yeah. So the flywheel's off, leaking pretty bad right here at the rear main seal. It's absolutely imperative that I got in here and tried to fix some stuff. Even if I just had to put fluid in the trans to quiet the trans down, this is still an, a pretty significant oil leak. It's an easy fix. It looks like someone's, oh yeah, someone's been in here doing this. This is all screwed up at the, the uh, seal is too far in on this side and it's, it's flush up here so the seal is installed incorrectly. So there's where it's leaking and you can see how the seal is pushed in at the bottom and it's flush at the top. There's all kinds of tool marks and pry marks around the top. I hate to see that. You don't need to do that. You just drill a tiny little pilot hole, run a little screw in the center and just pop it out with a pry bar. The flywheel for sure has seen better days. I bet you could probably machine this and it would be fine. I'm certainly not going to throw it in a scrap bin because we do sell these on occasion but this this is not nice enough to just put back in without anything. And the clutch, the clutch isn't too bad. It's pretty glazed. I, I know it's been replaced and I will let you know how many miles are on this clutch. I'll look through the paperwork. But, sorry guys, didn't mean to hit you. I'm definitely not going to reinstall this clutch. I have a much nicer one that's going to go back in. And it's clear it's been leaking for some time. The input shaft looks nice, so the pilot bearing being a little gritty doesn't really affect anything. But when you turn this over, it doesn't feel great. So the thing is here, if I get this apart and I, I, I get the bearing out and the bearing feels good and everything still feels gritty, I'm going to put a transmission in this car. But if I get it apart and the bearing is clearly bad, then I think we'll be okay. So some of you may be wondering how much time I have into this project thus far. And I can tell you that to get it down to the crankshaft this far, I'm about an hour and 15 minutes. It's not really the, a hard car to work on, but most Miata transmissions I can get out in 30 minutes, 35 minutes, even less if it's a nice car. But this car has been worked on by people that maybe take some more time to get some of it apart, like the broken off captured threads on the rear subframe. That was kind of a fight. There's a few things here that made things slightly more difficult. Next, I'm going to go clean this transmission. It is really dirty. I like to work on clean stuff, even though, you know, my teardowns are almost always dirty. And we'll come back and get the rear main seal and all that stuff done before we start our transmission work. Now, we're going to get this cleaned up a little bit before we get the rear main seal replaced. 
I got a drain pan underneath it. Hopefully everything makes it in. I'm mostly getting it in the pan. Oh, I'm running out. Oh, it looks like all she wrote, but that's a hell of a lot cleaner than it was. Now to get the seal out. I'll usually find one of the little divots in the factory seal here. All you need. Bada boom, bada bing. No damage to the crankshaft or that little housing. One of the things I've also learned working on these cars, as long as I have, always get factory parts. For seals like this that take a lot of work to uh, find out if they will end up leaking because they're not original. I'm not saying that all the aftermarket ones will leak. I'm just saying that my experience has led me to only buy. OEM parts for this type of repair. For some reason, it doesn't seem like my seal driver set has the correct size for the seal. So we're gonna do the old-fashioned way. We're gonna tap it in with a, uh, an extension and a brass mallet. We're just gonna go nice and ginger all the way around. And Okay, it's flush, same depth all the way around. I'm really happy with that. Now we can throw a flywheel back on it. So this is a clutch and flywheel out of a car that we dismantled at work. And my guys typically keep an eye open for parts that look like they've been recently replaced. So we're gonna see how this one looks. They told me this one's nice. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Well, it looks a lot better than the other flywheel. This is uh, an Exedi clutch. Now, I don't really consider that an upgrade over a factory clutch, but uh, the clutch's condition is significantly less worn than the one we took out. So, we're going to install this clutch and flywheel. I know I could buy new ones, I, I get that, but I don't really see the need when I, I have... Someone obviously bought this new not that long ago, Pilot bearing is perfect. We're just going to slam this stuff in. It looks like it says 11 of 21. And I think this has been on the shelf for over a year. These aren't clocked any sort of way, so it doesn't really matter. Yes, these have a torque spec. It's true. You, you, you shouldn't just zing them down and hope for the best. A lot of people do, and they probably don't have a problem. I'm not that guy. Now it's time to put the clutch on. Pilot tool here. I'm not gonna crank these down, we're just gonna kind of get it a little snug. Now we can tighten these. Okay, 
Okay, I've got the transmission all cleaned up. Now we can start to remove some of these parts. Here's the throttle bearing. We're going to re be replacing that. We can get this off the fulcrum. We'll be re-greasing that. The next thing we need to do is get this cover off. Now, if you look, it's a little bit of play in the input shaft bearing. I'm hoping that once I pull this apart and we can look at that bearing, that we can condemn the bearing and not the transmission. There's a little place to pry down here in the bell housing. Now, there is no gasket for this, but there is a seal. I have a new seal there. And there is the bearing. I don't see any anything screaming at me. That that shaft bearing looks nice. Well, uh, I, I'm going to throw in the towel on this transmission for now. The way this feels when you turn it over, I can't feel the vibration or the damage, any kind of problems with this bearing. This is the new one. And I certainly don't want to replace this to find out it wasn't the problem. And we saw what the fluid looked like and how little there was inside this transmission, which leads me to think that this is going to need more bearings replaced than I currently have and I need to get this car done. So I think I'm gonna save this transmission for a teardown and maybe a repair. Maybe I don't just tear things down, maybe we fix it. But this is gonna get saved for a later day and we're gonna jam another transmission in this car. And here's the new transmission. I gotta get some stuff off of it. Thankfully I had one in stock and on the shelf. I don't like burning my inventory on my own cars, but I don't really have a choice. I need to get this car done. Okay, now we need to do a little prep. This one, we're gonna replace the throw-out bearing. I still have a little grease on it, but we'll get that cleaned off and get some fresh stuff on there. And some fresh grease on the fulcrum. Okay, that looks pretty good. We need to clean the fingers on the clutch fork. This transmission only has 74,000 miles on it. it. came from a beautiful car. Really sad part out some of these cars that have so, that have been taken care of so well, but end up getting wrecked. First thing is first. Let's get some grease on that fulcrum. Put them on there. You don't want to put too much in here. So then it can cause other problems. Get a little bit on the shaft here. And that's where that throwout bearing rides. And we'll get some on the fingers. It's really all you need. Brand new Mazda throwout bearing. I understand that Mazda probably doesn't make the bearing, it's probably Timkin or somebody else. NTN bearing. Let's get some grease there. I gotta get this back in the fulcrum. Well, one of the last things I need to do is replace the output shaft seal. Now this one actually looks pretty good. They're usually torn, but I'm already here. We're gonna get this replaced. Now we need to swap the speed sensor over. Now one thing I'm not that keen on is installing, swapping the sensor over since I don't have an O-ring for this, a new one. I think it's gonna be okay, and at least it's easy to do once it's in the car. If it ends up leaking, it's not gonna leak. Just gotta believe in that. We also need to install this lower bracket. Okay, we're ready to go back in. At this point, I need to replace the power plant frame because not only did someone wreck all these clips, which I have, but the big problem is up here where the transmission bolts, there's supposed to be a piece that has captured nuts on it and they have removed it. I, I don't know why, 
But the good news is these are very plentiful. They don't sell that well. I probably have 20 of them at the shop. So I grabbed one. Now we're going to replace it. So that's not supposed to come out that easy. See, it's a good thing I did this. So this is what I need to take out next. Make sure we're, yeah. Okay. So there is a, this is an insert that sticks up into the differential. And to, to get this PPF off, you need to get this off. Normally I'd use an air hammer, but I think I left mine at work. And it's fine. This will work. I've done this out in the field a few times. Yep, start to get a little gap. This may have seemed like a lot of work, but I can't let things be wrong. I, not with these cars. So this is the one off the car, and this is the one off of one of my parts cars. You can see it has this captured nut insert, and it looks like they just drilled or cut these little uh, pins off so that it had regular hardware on it. And that's, it's just not what I like. Plus this has all good clips on it. We'll be able to secure the harness correctly. All right, up with the new power plant frame. No. Nope, not like that. got these, they're this, it has these up top, and that little knurl has to sit down into this PPF. So we gotta get them pretty tight, otherwise they'll get loose over time. It is finally time, we can go back up with the transmission. We've got it roughly into place. Let's see how this goes. Probably should have done the PPF after the trans, but it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna use a pole jack carefully on the harmonic balancer, which is going to tilt the engine back and make it a little easier to mate the engine and transmission. Let's shed some light on the situation here. What is happening? It is still the clutch. The clutch line is still a problem. I think I got it fixed now. Yeah, I just got to get it on the dowels and we are good to go. Aha, that's good. Yes, good. Let's uh, lightly thread some bolts into it. All right, we're not gonna go crazy. I don't really wanna create a problem. You can get them in a bind if you do too much at once. So now we're gonna tackle one towards the top. Yeah, this is perfectly lined up anyway, but we're still gonna do it right.
do this by hand because you can't really feel as well with power tools. All right, it's starting to thread, no problem. I was worried about the threads up there and I should have chased them because someone put the wrong bolt at the very top. All right, now we can get this transmission jack out of the way, I think. For now, we may need it in a little bit to get the PPF lined up, but so I'll, I'll leave it on standby here. Now we can start zipping them down. All right, let's zip the rest of these bell housing bolts tight, shall we? I think there's one more and I need a wrench for it. Okay, all the bell housing bolts are in and torque to spec. Now it's time to have all the fun and get the starter bolts started. Starter bolts started. There's a joke there somewhere. There are three bolts that hold the starter in. And we are going to be happy once we get one of them started. Started. God, I keep... I can't stop. Unfortunately, I'm running into more problems because ah, whoever worked on this kind of bent up the metal clutch hydraulic line. I can't get anything to line up. And if I bend it to put it back into place, I, I fear that I'm going to create a weak, weak spot in the metal line. They don't like being bent back and forth a bunch of times. And I have another one from this transmission, so I think I'm just going to hang all the clutch hydraulics on it, plumb the hose up there, and then swap it over real quick. I think that's the best way to do this. Uh, I just I don't want to create a, a new problem for the next guy. So we'll just sneak. Whoops, sorry guys, didn't mean to kick you. We'll just sneak this one up there. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Or maybe I can go in through here. Yes, this probably makes more of sense. One way or the other, we're going to get this in there. So now we're going to try to get the starter bolts tight, nice and easy. Yeah, now that that's threaded in. I can use the impact. And then I've got the one that has the nut on the back side. Okie doke. Now we can lower the car down, finish hooking up the correctly shaped clutch hydraulics. This is what we have to do. We have to remove this hose, or put that hose where that hose is. It's simple. So first thing we need to do is crank that 10 millimeter line off. I'm gonna jam a rag in here to catch any brake fluid so we don't get it on the paint. Not that I can't wipe it off. Prevention is more important. That's, before we get that too loose, let's grab the new line, take the red cap out of it. So that is ready to go on. Now we'll get that clip out. Clips back in. Line is tight. We'll have to bleed that when we're done. Now I have to try to get the old clutch hydraulics out which are kind of just hanging out and jammed up here, I think. Where did they go? There they are. Okay, so this was the problem. This is not supposed to be shaped like this. The coil, yes, but this is supposed to be, well, like more like this and then so this has been bent in every direction. This is supposed to be much closer together. 
Uh, I could have fought this and fought this, but to bend this line around so many times, it just wasn't worth the risk of creating a problem in the future. Now I'm going to wrestle this back into place. Oh, these are too bad. Ah, that was pretty simple. So now we can get the bolts in it. All right, now it's time to bolt this up. We're gonna go nice and easy here. Yep. I actually backed these bolts off just a hair just so I could get this one in. Now we can zip them all down. All right, now at this point, I need to remove all these broken clips that were pried out of the previous PPF, which stands for power plant frame. I know you guys might be asking if you're not familiar with Miatas. So now I think this is the only one. Oh, I do have that one. Okay, so I just need to get all of these broken ones off. All right, now we can start at one end and start snapping the harness in. Looks like I'm missing one clip. Let's see if I have something to do with that. It may not be totally necessary, but I like to make things as original as they were. Okay, and now we can start plugging in all of the things. That's vehicle speed sensor. All right, these are the re reverse switch for the reverse lights. And I think a neutral safety switch. And we're back in. So much better with the harness properly routed. And you don't have to worry about things rubbing through and creating problems. Time to slide the drive shaft in. And dry shaft is tight. Okay, at this point it is time to put some transmission fluid in here. I, I verified it was fully drained already. I got the plug out, well the fill plug out. And now I'm using some uh, Motorcraft Synthetic MT. Uh, this is what most people run in these transmissions and are they are happy with it, so that's what we're going to do. And you just want to fill it until it runs out. You don't want to put too much in here because it can foam. And that is bad. I chose to do this with the exhaust off because it's so much easier. And the second quart. These hold just under two quarts. Starting to come out a little bit. Yep, okay, that's all she wrote. And we just put that right there. And it's full. Well, I'm trying to get this oxygen sensor out. And I'm not having a lot of luck here. Well, now it's coming out. It doesn't feel great. I did get it hot already. Not too hot. Don't want to damage the threads on the way out. I think we're making some progress. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty chewed up, but the threads on the pipe are good, and that's what I care about. Well, I've chased the threads on the two studs. The one that came out, I chased the threads also. Cleaned up the threads on the hardware, found the exact nut is supposed to be there. So now it's time to hang the exhaust. Okay, so here comes the wrestling match. 
Thank God this isn't a BMW because if this was a BMW, there'd be an extra person here helping. Watch out, light. This is pretty fun. It's by far the most fun. Let's see if I can get this in a hanger real quick. Ah, I can take the strain off myself. Let's get this a little bit further in. Okay, let me go up just a little bit more. Oh, we are so close. Oh, that was as perfect as you could hope for. You get the hardware threaded in lightly. Or loosely, lightly, what am I talking about? The B40 doesn't taste as good as you think it does. All right, all I gotta do is Tighten the three nuts. We got an oxygen sensor to plug in. I need to get another oxygen sensor for the front. All the hangers are in. That wasn't too bad. I'm actually going to try to tighten these by hand. I mean, without my air tools. Just to make sure everything goes smoothly. I really don't want to fish out a broken stud. Save the hardest one for last, as you should never do. Okay. We all tight? We good? We're good. Now it's time to install all the braces that we had to take off. Last thing I'd like to do before I put the final brace on is add some more weld to this threaded insert. This is uh, a pretty common problem when you cross thread these bolts is it'll actually break the threaded insert off of the subframe and then you can't get it tight or get it out so you usually have to weld it or cut it. In this case we were able to weld it and get it out but I want to put a few more welds on it. I want to get it a little bit stronger for the next guy. I will say I am not a welder. I own a welder but me myself um, don't judge me. That's ah, gonna, that'll hold it. It's not going anywhere. Uh, it just looks a lot better now. Now it's time to put on this rear brace. Now keep in mind, this one is bent and we're going to have to straighten it once it's mounted in the car. Don't love that. Don't love that at all, but it looks like I need to get a couple of these style clips from work. I don't think I have any here at the house. I'm going to have to get another one of these bolts too for the one that I had to repair there. All right, let's get all these zipped in. I'm going to thread the wrong bolt in here, I got an extra one of these wrong bolts. I mean, is it really wrong if it fits? But that way I know it's lined up when I get the correct bolt. Things a little off kilter, it's fine. I don't like it, but. Okay, so I'm gonna get the correct bolt, a better one that's not all corroded and cross threaded like this one. We'll get that in there tomorrow. And then, uh, now I gotta, I gotta do something about this. This almost looks like loader damage. I wonder if this thing ever went to the auction. Don't mind that. That's as good as she's gonna get. 
All right, well, I figured it was time to install the lower cover, which did not come with this car. I have a couple at work. So I looked at every single bolt hole and uh, I had to chase every single one. Every single one had rusty, ugly threads, except for the subframe since that came from a different car. And then I have to change and try to find some hardware to hold this to this part of the front bumper. But I should have something here. Now we're gonna do something I do with every single car that I've owned, that I've bought to fix and sell, that I've ever worked on, and that is replace the brake fluid in the reservoir. We're gonna do that on both the brake and the clutch. We do need to bleed the clutch still, but uh, I'm gonna suck these reservoirs dry, get all that old fluid out. This is one of the most overlooked maintenance items I see on cars, and it's so easy. Uh, it's just nobody ever thinks about it. Pull that fluid down. Do the same with the clutch reservoir. As soon as I can get it apart. Ooh, that was dark. And then we're gonna replace the fluid with some fresh stuff. We got some Department of Transportation 4. Nice and clean. And I, I'll typically do this several times on a car that's had really bad looking fluid. Uh, driving it circulates some of it, and then I'll, I'll do this probably every few thousand miles eventually. It'll be clear. You can flush the systems too, but I don't have a brake flush machine. Let's get this bled. So here's the bleeder. I've got the cap off of it. I'm going to need to crack loose first to make sure that this bleeder is, is happy. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Did I get it? Very much so. Cool. We got my wife out here helping us today. Hi. Many of you have met, seen her on the channel before. All right, give me five and hold. Still holding? Yes. Alright. Oh, okay, let up. Or it's... Yep. yep. Okay, okay. You, you can give me five, five and hold. hold. time. Okay, I'm holding. That, that looked better. better. Maybe go check, check if that's what the level looks like. like. In second, you let up. I might have to suck the fluid out of the reservoir again because it looks like it's jet black. That's what I'm going to do. Give me just a minute. Should I let go? Yeah, you can let go. Yeah, don't put this in your mouth. <laughs> it will be a memorable experience, but not the good kind. I'm holding. Okay. All right, once again. I'm holding. It's starting to look a lot better. One more time. All right, we're pretty clear now. That's good. Okay, All done. Thanks for the assistance. You are welcome. I'm glad I could I could borrow your left leg. Yeah, not the right one. No. We forgot one step. I got a much nicer shift knob than what this car had. 
when I do these cars, I try to make them as nice as I can. Total waste of my time, I promise. But hey, more Miatas is good. Our job is complete. Let's see if we have any transmission noise or any other unwanted. That's power steering. I need to put some power steering fluid in it. Okay, now the power steering should be quiet and happy. Yes. No noise. I don't hear anything. Are we fixed? I think we're fixed. Pull her on out. Testing. Well, this video is already pretty long, so I don't really find it pertinent to film me washing the car, but I am gonna wash the car. We'll show how well it looks when I'm done. Well, it washes up pretty good. I think this thing would look a lot better with some proper paint correction. This thing has been a thorn in my side for a long time, probably like six or seven months it took to get this car to where it's ready to move on. Why do I keep doing this to myself? Time for a quick test drive. Hopefully my camera mount stays with us. Since there's no traction control to turn off, the next thing you want to do is buckle your seatbelt. Steering wheel straight. Should be all we need to do. This is going to be a long ending and rant. So get comfy. This is the stack of receipts that I got with this Miata. And normally when you get a stack of service history this thick on a 20 something year old car, uh, it's a wonderful thing. It's really rare that you find this much paperwork with something this old. It generally means that someone cared enough about that car that they saved every receipt, and those cars are typically in very good condition. But in this case, this stack of receipts was my roadmap. It was my guide of places to look on this car to find things that were done wrong and needed my attention, at the very least, double-checking. And I have thumbed through these receipts and they are very scary. I am not happy seeing most of these receipts. Uh, I'm just gonna read the one that I think is most pertinent to this video. Uh, Replace clutch disc, not a kit. I, I, I think they meant kit. Replace rear main seal, front caliper, rear calipers, rear brake hose, front brake hose. Replaced all four brake pads. I think they meant all four wheels worth. Replaced all four brake rotors. Replace brake master cylinder, clutch master cylinder, and clutch slave cylinder. Now, I've had 40, 50 of these cars. I know them quite well. And uh, I would say that this owner of this car was extremely unlucky that their clutch and brake hydraulic system, all of those components failed simultaneously at the exact same time, and they all needed to be replaced. What likely was the case is that a few of these parts were bad, and they were sold everything. Now, I don't really find that to be 
completely honest. Now, you could always pitch it to your customer. Hey, we could do the entire system. Either way, uh, I have never seen all of those systems fail at the exact same time. I know all of these parts can fail independent of each other. I just, it, it doesn't feel super honest. And the worst part about all of this is that this receipt is for $3,049.50. Now, for that much money, keep in mind this is a Miata. This is not a BMW. This is not a Mercedes. These cars have low book times. They're easy to work on. They're very forgiving. To charge three grand for that amount of work and to do it this poorly, it should be criminal. They left the clips out of the front brake lines that could have rubbed through the body and they could have lost brake pedal while driving. It's a safety concern and they charge three grand for that. It's poor. Now, I understand wanting to make sure you don't get comebacks and, and replacing the entire system. But on that same note, if I go back to 10 months prior to this invoice, this car received rear rotors, rear pads, and rear calipers and rear brake hoses. I have no idea what was going on. I will say that the shop that butchered the AC line and didn't realize that fitting flipped 180 degrees was not the same shop that did all this work. That was one receipt from one shop. So this person was apparently really good at finding shops that didn't know what they were doing. Now I'm not gonna say that every receipt here is bad. There's plenty of work here that was done right. Um, the belts, the radiator, I didn't see any issues with any of that, but of course I had to double check it. This, this makes me mad. And I'll, the, the part that makes me the most mad is that this stack of receipts goes back to about 2017. There's a few stragglers from 13 or 14. This is a Miata. They aren't like this. They don't need this much work. This feels just wrong. Like they, they just charge for work that they invented was wrong with this car. This is one of the most reliable cars that Mazda's ever made. This is one of the best cars they've ever made. And I know I'm a Miata guy, so I might be biased. But these cars are simple. Compared to the modern stuff, this is excessive. This is like on par with a 20-year-old BMW M5. That's what I would think would look like that kind of history. I added all these up, at least the big ones. It's over $20,000, which I think is at least double or more than double of what I think this car is worth in its current condition fixed. It's bad. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm not going on a rant about poor repairs because if you try to repair your car yourself, you watch a YouTube video, you call your neighbor over or your buddy comes over and you try to fix something and you break off a bolt or you do something wrong, something goes very wrong and, and you need to take it to a shop to get it straightened out. There's no harm in that. You tried. People try to fix their cars to save money all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why they take it to a shop where they trust the work's going to be done correctly. This was not done correctly, and that's what I have issue with. And I, I'm not here to say that all shops are gonna do this because I don't think most shops would ever do this low level of work, and I would think that most shops wouldn't charge so much for the quality of work done here. I, there's a lot of really good shops out there. I know very many of them that you will get the same or better service than you could at the dealership, and you'll pay less in the process. I'm all about the independent shops, mom and pop places. Those guys are not in business because they make all kinds of money. They're in business because they like fixing cars and treating customers right. This was just the exception. And shops like this make all of the rest of those other shops look very good. I guess this was one big rant, and I am sorry. I did not intend to make this go on this long. But... I don't know that I'm ready to tackle another Miata project. This one really wore me out. I bought this car wrecked. I put a subframe in it, put a fender, a bumper, and a headlight in it. It was all bolt-on parts. I had about five or six hours in the total repair from the accident, and I had much more time in sorting out this mess. And it kind of wore me out. I don't really have the time, but if you guys really enjoyed this video, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna go out and find another clapped out Miata, but sometimes they just happen to find me. So don't be surprised. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.